people say that um how do you how do you get out of a, a a trade or how do you how do you make money on a trade and the only way you can can make money on a trade is if you trust yourself that you're going to get out of a trade yeah. and for a long time i didn't trust myself and so i would get in the trade and the trade would start to go against me and i would say oh it's going to come back it's going to come back it's going to come back and then before you know it i, I was i was down eight hundred dollars Welcome to the Steady Trade Podcast. We are back with Kim and a very special guest, a guy called Clutch Trader, or Clutch Clutch Trades, Clutchy Clutch Clutch, on Twitter. Um, clutch Caller. Clutch Caller. I really wanted to get this guy on because he's done what very few do, uh, and it shows extreme promise. Uh, this guy has, uh, he started off with just a couple of thousand dollars, like two, three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, struggled, um, as many do under the PDT. It's a major issue for a lot of traders. Uh, and then something's clicked. He's had back to back five figure months, 10 K plus months. And that's put him over the PDT. Uh, so he's done what very few can do. So a lot of people buy the way over PDT. Clutch mm -hmm. Caller has traded his way over PDT. So we just want to get him on, uh, hear his story, hear our clicked, and, and help everyone else do the same thing. So welcome, Clutch. Welcome, Kim. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure being on. I never imagined <laughs> I'd be on. So this, this is truly humbling. I appreciate you guys. Uh, it's so great. Where, where, do you, uh, where do you live? Uh, I'm in Texas. I, I live oh, right outside awesome. of Dallas. Okay. So. So what time, what time do you have to get up in the morning? Um, usually um, I'll, I, I ch I'll check the stock market. I'll, I'm an early riser. So I get up naturally about 4.35 in the morning. Um, I'll check the stock market about six um, and then I walk away. Um, it's a little different. When I first started training, I was up at yeah. six and I, 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 I watched the market open um, and I sat there until it closed and- wow. Um, recorded it and but now with my trading style more um, honed in mm -hmm. I, I I walk away until it's time for me to make a trade good job how long have you been at it for um roughly about five years okay dude five that's years. how long it takes man like for most <laughs> people that's how long it takes. Well, like, um, when, when I when I first started, um, like I said, I got in with Timothy Sykes and, and Tim Bowen and you guys, and and I would listen to your webinars, and um, I was part of the the Penny Stocking Silver program, and I would get all these alerts. And so I, I I'm an ex teacher, and, and I was a football coach, American football coach, and so when I when I got into it. I never want to do anything just uh, just to, to try it. I want to do yeah. something to, to be great at it. And yeah. so I gave myself a four-year plan um, because that's pretty much what, what lawyers, doctors, people with degrees go yeah. through. If they, if they yeah. want to be successful, they have to get the training. So I gave myself four years to really um, master being a trader because honestly, I, I, had, no, I had no idea what um, day trading was. Now, I, I, I've invested before. You know, I, I bought, you know, long-term stocks like Tesla, CarMax, um, Home Depot, those types of stocks and held them for years. But when it came to day trading, I had no idea uh, what I was getting myself into. So <laughs> can, I, can I just ask, so like, what was the stuff that you did in the beginning that didn't work? I mean, it all contributes to your growth, right? But what, what was the stuff that you did in the beginning? And then what was the stuff that you did that made a click because obviously it's just clicked, right? You just had back to back 10 K months out of nowhere. So like, how has this happened? Okay. So in the beginning, I was more of a sheep. And so I was, I was 
watching the, the DVDs and, you know, I was just watching them and I was watching it over and over and over. And I would listen okay. to the Roland Wolfs and, you know, 17 <laughs> hour days of studying and, you know, and so I was watching and watching and, and, and that's what I did wrong. You know, I, I just watched hours and hours of videos thinking that it was going to make me a great stock trader. It's going to click. Exactly. And so what I did after, um, and, and I, I started off with a very small account. I started off with $500. Um, wow. And I, I, I told myself, if I can double 500, then I should be able to double a thousand. And I, I, I can, I can, I proven that I can double it. Um, the problem is when you have such a small account like that is you're only making $15 a yeah. trade, you know? And so after doing that for so long, it became depressing. And um, the hardest thing about it was convincing my wife that I was, this was a good thing, you know, and she, when I would sit in front of the computer all day long and I would tell her, you know, I made $12 today. <laughs> Um, she, after a period of time, she started to get frustrated with that. And so, so for me, I had to change my mindset of, of, of how did I do in the trade, not how much did I make in the trade. Mm -hmm. And so I shifted from making dollars to how much did I make per share? And so, you know, 15 cents a share or 35 cents a share started to to, to seem better, you know, because yeah, sure. even though I only had 10 shares or, you know, 35 shares, I knew one day if I had 3,500 shares, the potential of that trade was this much. Yeah. And so it stopped being so depressing for me. And, yeah. and so, but th that was the biggest thing I didn't do uh, that I did wrong was, um, I didn't, I, I didn't take the time to break down the videos and the charts that I was watching. Let, um, let's just talk about that because that was fascinating that you watched hours and hours and hours of video and yet that was what you attribute now to being one of your strategic errors. So what, what do you wish you had done with those videos? Because those videos obviously are needed for beginners, but wh where was that point where that was all you were doing? Um, so um, after about a year of growing my account and then losing, growing, losing, I didn't, I didn't ever feel confident. I didn't ever feel mm -hmm. like I could enter a trade and confidently uh, lose or confidently win. Um, because I mean, quite honestly, when you're looking for a, a, a dip buy on the five minute chart, it looks totally different than the one minute chart. And on the one minute chart, it looks totally different than the 15 minute chart. And at, at 830 in the morning, it looks totally different than it does at 11 o'clock. And so my mind was just like, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? And so I, I went back to what I know. And what I know is that um, trading is, is the closest thing that I, that I can get to, to competition. And I love competition. That's why I was a football coach. Um, that's why I love uh, playing poker um, because it's competition. And so I took, I, I treated trading just like that. And so in my coaching career, I would watch hours and hours of coaching film. And I would look for certain tendencies in each play. And so I basically started to do that with my stock charts. I would record all the top runners for the day. I would record the screen from 8, from, from 8, 8, 30 a.m. until the close. And I would just watch the level two. I would watch how the stocks moved, the charts moved. And, and I put up every indicator possible on my chart. I put up every moving averages, uh, VWAP, um, wow. um, I, I would trend lines. I mean, I had everything on my chart at first because I was looking for how and why these stocks move the way they move, you know, because I would see runners that they would start off, they would gap up, they would run up to a, a new high of day. 
and then they would finish and they would they would be you know under VWAP. And so I started to look at and I found uh, tendencies that I could I could look at and say these stocks 80% of the time they do this. I don't care what they do in the middle but yeah. they're going to start here and they're going to end here based upon these tendencies, these indicators that I was able to find that were consistent. And so yeah. after hours and hours and hundreds of recordings, and um, I was able to finally understand how a stock moves, where is it going to end up? And I just have to be put myself in a good position to be able to to be willing to stomach um, the bad entry. Um, and so for a long time, what I did was I, I paper traded my first entry. So my, my first entry, instead of going actually going into it, I would pretend to go into it because 90% of the time I was wrong. And so I said, well, if I'm wrong and I paper trade this, and then this, my, 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 you know how you, you, you always tell people to size in. Well, yeah. my first size in was, it was a paper trade. It was a pretend. Yeah. So if I was wrong, no big deal. But if I was right, then my second entry was my, my real entry. And so that's where it's really helped me out because I've been able to, to become patient doing that. Um, and there was a lot of times, and like I said, I, I would, I would, I would make a thousand, lose a thousand, make a thousand, lose a thousand. But for me, a lot of it was learning and trusting what I was doing. Um, and a lot of those, 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 those failed um, trades w was all learning to me. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> no, no. Honestly, I mean, I'm presuming that you're short mostly show biased by the way you're talking i can tell by the way you're explaining things that you sound show biased right um actually i don't like shorting stocks at all um i, I actually want to be a long trader yeah unfortunately boss. being under the pdt <laughs> i found that that's the way you can make the most money yeah short. yeah dude I'm, and, I'm 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 in the same boat as you and and actually, I remember making the exact same realization as you, um, probably just before I had. Like, I, I, I was exactly, exactly, exactly where, where you were, um, I'd say, like, March last year. March mm. last year, it just clicked that no matter – I thought just macro, right, like big picture. Um, yeah. These kinds of stocks that are up this much – 70% will be here by the end of the day. So it was always just a case of getting the best entry possible to have the best risk reward to like, because what you don't lose on the way up, you make even more on the way down, right? Yeah. Um, we just got to it. I got through it through tracking Excels and you've got it through watching screen recordings, but both put you at the, the same end result. Exactly. Um, the next, the next part is like what I found to grow and I've had a tough year by the way, but what I've found to grow is by looking at all of the different variables. So like maybe a company that has had a really bad financial year, will you'll be able to short that more aggressively or a, co a company with a, a, an existing ATM in progress, you can short a little earlier mm -hmm. where the lower floor you have to short a lot later. And you start refining the entry entry day. The, the, what you do and the same thing always happens. You know it's going to fail. Good high high probability of failure. It's just when you get in and you, you learn to get better executions through exploring the variables. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and one of the biggest things that used to frustrate me was I would be in the right position and then I would get scared out of the stock and I would cut it and then it would it would shoot up yeah yeah you know, dude. five dollars yeah. and then um you know I, I would i would get scared and then i would cut my short quick and then it would drop from underneath me and, and i got tired of that happening and so that's why that's why i threw up every indicator because i was looking for an edge of there's got to be some consistencies in the way a stock a stock moves because we were, we're dealing with people. Same thing with the football play, same thing on That's the right. poker table. 
there's always things that that tip you off to the direction the big dog the big people with the big money the market makers those people want the stock to go and it's only a matter of time of when they take that stock there yep. yeah and no. so tracking all those indicators um I've, I've been able to, to, to hone it down to probably three or four indicators that I use um, to give me a good feel for where the, the direction of the stock's going to go. And because of that, I'm able to hold through you know, some bad entries um, and, and, and feel confident that it's going to work out. And, and, and that only came with hours and hours of screen time. Um, watching the level two, um, because before then I, 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 I was, I was frustrated. I was getting out early, getting in too early and it, it, it started to, to, to shake my confidence. And, um, there were a lot of times when I said, you know, yeah, I don't know if this is for me. Um, you know, but at the same time, I thought in back of my, my mind that if I'm willing to do the work and get the proper training, um, I, I can be successful. And, and I always told myself that. And, you know, five years later, um, I'm in a position where I feel confident in my trades. And if I lose, I'm, I'm not upset. If I win, you know, great. Um, it's more about the execution now um, than, than, it, than it's ever been. And, and I'm glad that I'm finally at this point because I feel like I'm an actual stock trader, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the one important thing that, that I think you're touching on and just to clarify it is that I think the main thing that you're communicating is that you're trading the big picture. Do you know how like a lot, like 90% of traders lose and a lot of traders lose a lot of traders yeah. are chasing price action where you're not doing that. You're trading the big picture. You're saying, look, based on my analysis of everything I've seen over the years, I'm saying that this is going to end up here. Where all, everyone else, a lot of the losing traders are, oh, it's just double bottomed. It's just on this. It's just on that. Exactly. Where, where the, the better traders, the winning traders, often will look at the technicals and maybe the fundamentals and think this should end up here. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to worry about the noise. I'm not going to worry about the, the ups and the downs. I'm just going to put my trust and conviction that this is going to end up here. But the, the issue is I also hold through some small pullbacks, some small trend changes, thinking, look, keep the big picture in mind. But how do you differentiate from when some, some slight uncomfortableness becomes a squeeze or becomes a situation that you don't know if you can cut? Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and that, that's the hardest part. Is I, I, same, people, same with say, me, <laughs> people say that um, how do you how do you get out of a, a, a trade or how do you how do you make money on a trade? And the only way you can can make money on a trade is if you trust yourself that you're going to get out of a trade. Yeah. And for a long time, I didn't trust myself. And so I would get in the trade and the trade would start to go against me and I would say, oh, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. And then before you know it, I, I was, I was down $800, but even before the trade happened, I didn't trust myself that I was going to get out of it. And so until I trusted myself and, and it's crazy because I started, uh, I, I, I started, a few years ago, I start I, I got back into poker. And I was a big time tournament uh, online poker player. And I remember uh, I was looking over my old poker notes and I said, in my poker notes, I said, I have on there that I asked myself two questions. Is this hand going to win me the tournament or is this hand going to knock me out of the tournament? You know? And so, and I, I, I said, you know, that's perfect for trading. So I, I, I switched that to this trading and I, I basically changed the words and said, is this trade going to make me a millionaire? And if it's not, get out of it, get out of it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I'm down $50 or, or, or $200, but if this trade isn't going to make me a millionaire, what's the point in staying, staying in it, you know? 
the reward right. isn't there, but this trade could potentially take me out of the game. That's right. And so right. once I, I, I took that correlation from the poker table to the trading uh, um, desk, I was able to say, okay, is this trade really going to be that important to my trading career? No, get out of it. Yeah. And so, Beautiful. you know, there's a lot of times, and, and trust me, I'm, I'm with you. Um, there's a lot of times when I hold it, I'm like, but this is the one that's going to change. This is the one that's going to come back. And, and then I end up, you know, going further than I thought. And then I get out of it. And I'm like, well, that's, lear that's learning, you know, yeah, for um, sure. but I, I hope that makes sense. But perfect. I mean, to me, it's, uh, it's, it makes absolute perfect sense, but we're, we're from the same cloth. So <laughs> oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah i know, I know you play poker <laughs> and i also play play poker as well yeah 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 did do, do you this is a random question but i'm gonna go there because he used to be a coach have you by chance clutch seen ted lasso the new series on uh apple no i don't watch much uh television um the majority of my stuff is stock charts <laughs> I bet, I bet. He, he's, a, he's a coach and uh, I too don't watch a lot, but I had too many people that I respect insist upon it because of his perspective on uh, sportsmanship and mm -hmm. his perspective. He's coming from a place of the glass half filled, but just some of the things I've heard you say uh, are, are remind TV of like, they, they'll call them a Ted Lassoism. So <laughs> it, it's, it's probably one worth watching because it's, it's just about that. He, he's not just looking at that game. He's looking at the big picture. He's looking at the moods of his uh, players. He's realizing that their perspective or belief or lack of belief in themselves is going to impact them on game day. And I just feel like so much of what you've spoken about, it's like you have really been an observer of your own uh, internal dialogue. And that is part of what's shifted and also that you came into trading with a time horizon that was realistic, that this, I'm going to give myself four or five years. So it just feels like you've done a lot of things on the kind of emotional intelligence side really well. So congrats, man. It's impressive. Oh, I appreciate that. You know, and that was another thing that, that um, as an ex-coach teacher, um, I, I had to go into, okay, if I was designing a stock trading course what would it look like yes would, would i just take one um yeah. one teacher's oh. course absolutely yeah. not and so i went out and i looked for the top six seven traders out there and yeah. some of them i learned a lot of what not to do like i'm not going to do that yep. that's not my style I, yep. I i don't and so the others um you you pull different things just like just like when you're you're studying for your degree you have several different professors throughout your your career uh, in in college and so you know I, I mean I I I've I've studied them all Tim Sykes Tim Bowen Stephen um, Tim Gratani uh, Pop John Papa um, um, Deckmark um, uh, Canal Desai um, wow. I mean all of them. And, and I took good. them and I've taken Roland Wolf. I've taken the boot camps, uh, bought the videos, watched all the YouTubes. And I say, oh, there's no, I didn't, I didn't, I've never watched all the YouTubes. People that say that, I'm like, wow, that's crazy that you watch all of them. You know, um, I did this a lot. I did this for a lot of hours and I had never watched all of everything, you know? And so when they say yeah. that, I'm like, man, I don't know how you did it because I only have 24 hours in a day. Right, exactly. You know? but, but it also sounds like you're smart enough to realize that you can't just watch. You also have to get in on the field. You have to get in front of and, and look at it for yourself because them showing you and them telling you isn't the same as you recognizing it. And exactly. that I think is a big distinction to you gave us early on mm -hmm. in this conversation was that you realized at some point, uh, if I watch these, I'll become it. And then you realize, no, actually, I have to start to take what I've learned from these videos 
and start to implement it and see if I can do it on my own, which is really, I, I yeah, think that yeah. is an important truth for anybody listening. Cause I, I do think there is that, what is that called? That's like, you know, uh, perf- good enough is the enemy. What is that? Perfection is the enemy of good enough. You know, exactly. Yeah. Can, can you know, I just and- Sorry, dude. Can I just check? Are you, were you five years five years full time, or were you working some of that time? Good question. Good question. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I was. I, I mean, I, I had a job, you know, and so, but I, I mean, I, I was pretty much full time because any chance I got, and that's why the screen recordings came, you know. So, ah, so I, 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 I was I'm fortunate that I was in a position where I could um, look at the gappers see what was running in the morning, hit record on my screen, and then I would go. And then I would come back and I would just watch it over and over and over. But I didn't do this starting off. It wasn't until probably um, last year that I started to uh, feel confident in knowing what what patterns are out there, knowing what uh, indicators um, um, most people watched, um, you know, understanding uh, filings, I understood, you know, float rotation, all that stuff. I understood how it worked, but now I was at a position where I needed to understand how did the trade happen? Like, what were the market makers trying to do? How were they manipulating the, the retail investors? And could I identify when and how that was happening? Um, because I mean, I, I just got tired of going up and down and you know, when I would lose, I didn't feel confident in my loss. And that was the biggest thing that I took from coaching is anytime we lost a game, yeah. I, I, they just beat us. It wasn't because we weren't prepared. It wasn't because yeah. I wasn't confident in our game plan. It was because we just got outplayed. And I didn't feel that way in, in, in trading. And that's what I, I really worked hard to do. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I mean, I wasn't full time, but at the same time, any, yeah. any time I had was devoted to that. Yeah. Oh, but dude, dude, I have to tell you that you, you have my, uh, full respect because, uh, five years, I mean, people, people will say that I'm resilient. Like I oh, Steven's such a resilient trader, like five years, he's still going, but like, but I had like, I had Tim Sykes sending his emails here and there showing me support. And I had like, <laughs> hundreds or thousands or whatever on YouTube being like, keep going. And I'm like, I'm never going to let them down. But what I think is even more impressive about you, more impressive than me is you did it in the dark. Like some people you might have told and some people you might have known, but you did five years grinding in the dark, not in the public spot. And, and, um, and then you've like, and then you've been resilient enough to stick to it. Mm. And now it's paying off. Oh and- man. I tell you what, the, um, the hardest thing about stock trading is is that you are alone. Yeah, you know? dude. In 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 football and poker and in every other um, you know career like that, you have those moments of recognition. You know, after a win, you know people yeah. applaud you. People, you know, here on the poker t- yeah. on the trading desk, if you have a a, a win, no one's there to congratulate you. Yeah, yeah, you but know? dude, and it, it, dude, if you lose, it's like you're like it's all on you. Like if exactly. you lose, it's and like no one, and, and you what can, did I do? Yeah, go figure it out yourself because exactly. no one's gonna tell you. And and the only thing, the other thing about that is the people in your right. life that you do tell, they don't understand. Yeah, you know the process. They don't understand the work. They don't understand the mental strain. They, they don't understand it. So when you try to tell them, it's like you know who cares okay. you know it's exactly. like, you just don't get you it know? Like and so you're you, so that oh steven and uh kim th- there were lots of times when i listened to y'all's podcast and, and tim bowen and you know it gave me the the, the 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 will to say you know what just keep going keep going keep going um you know uh, tim sykes is um uh Twitter and Instagram posts of totally. you know him totally. and I said you know if, if these people can can do it that's right there, there's nothing that that they that's have right. that I don't so if I'm willing to put in the time and the effort and the energy yeah, yeah. I don't know when it's going to happen but I know it will happen because yeah. I've been blessed with certain you know um yeah dude if you love it and you've got the drive I cannot fail yeah 
Yeah, for sure. Is your wife, is your wife uh, supportive of it now? Uh, now she is. Now she is. Okay. At first, like I'm, t- I'm telling you, it was, I mean, I was doing it so much, you know, yeah. on the TV, about, yeah. YouTube was on, I was watching videos. <laughs> Um, in the car, I was listening to to to, to podcast, and um, I mean, it was nonstop. And for years, I would tell her, you know, I made eight cents a day, yeah. I made twenty cents a day. And then uh, one 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 day, we were in the car, and and I would never do this. I and I never recommend doing this, but I I I I got into a trade at the house, Uh-oh. and I was on my computer, and we had to leave, so I oh, took my boy. smartphone, Uh-oh. and I was in the middle of a trade in the car. And it, it ended up going where I knew it was going to go, it ended up making like $800. And, and yeah. I told her and she was like, oh, wow, that's, that's crazy. You know? And I think after that point, when she started to see like the real dollars, yeah. um, it became more of a, okay, you're not wasting your time. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and but- she's always been super supportive and, you know, but she's also the person that's like, you know, going to hold me accountable and, and, and yeah. you know, let's go, yeah. let's go. Let's, let's you For know. sure. For yeah. sure. So. Well, do you, what do you attribute your wisdom to know this? I'm going to give myself the four or five years. What, where did that, you know, man, talk about managing your expectations. What informed that? Um, because the, I, I always looked at, you know, it, it's not like I was, I was getting into, um, you know, flipping burgers. Yeah. You know? yeah. If I if I wanted to become a a, a, a great burger flipper, yeah. um, I, it wasn't going to take much time. You right. Know? Yeah. But if I wanted to get into, I was getting into a career where you could potentially make millions. You know, and in the yeah. back of my mind, I always thought if you if you're going to enter a career that you can make millions on why isn't everyone else doing this good question good why question isn't everyone else doing this That's and so right. the, the more i researched and the more i watched and um the more i understood there's a lot that goes into this and this isn't this isn't just something i'm going to do you do this is this is something that you have to go in and, and know yeah. you know yeah. um and so because of that I was able to put myself in a position of, um, because it's not about the, the knowledge, it's about the control of the emotion when you're in that trade to be able to pull the knowledge out of you. Yep. Because when, when the rubber hits the road yep. and, and you're in a, a big stock, like the other day I was in a stock BBIG and I, and I had a lot of a size in that one. That was the biggest stock I've ever traded. I think I had 3000 shares. And, and so I wasn't, I knew my setup was, was right, but the emotion of the size of the trade had me questioning, do I stay in? Do I get out? Do it? And so finally I had to walk away and I was like, okay, just trust what you've been doing. That's right. And I trusted it and it ended up working out for me. Um, but I, I think that's what it was is, um, is, is just knowing that if, if this was easy yeah. and, you know, it's not going to, you're not going to pick it up in six months. And then now there, there are people that do, uh, Steven ducks, you know, um, mm-hmm. those guys had, had off to them. But for me, I, I just, I, I, I'm very, um, I need to know all the ins and the outs, yeah. And so I figured I can't learn just from one guy. Yeah. No, it, it, it sounds like pragmatism. I mean, it sounds like you're pragmatic enough to realize if this is the most competitive game in the world with that much of an upside, there must be some sort of skill set that I'm going to have to develop for me to succeed at. It. Yeah, and definitely. That, do, do you, I, I, are you comfortable saying how old you are? Uh, I'm 42. Yeah. So I, I just wonder if age has something to do with that too, right? Just a maturity level of like, this is not going to be a cash and grab. You know, you've lived life, you've gone through different disappointments and obviously just being in sports, uh, you've seen people can give it their all and still lose. So exactly. 
it feels like maybe that helped temper your expectation. I, I really oh, feel yeah. so many, so many traders sabotage themselves at the beginning because they don't have proper expectations. And then that gets them discouraged very quickly early in the game. And it's just that mindset, like oh, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And it just seems like you got that right away. Uh, yeah. And, and unfortunately, um, it, it took, it took some, you know, some, some big losses. It took to get me to that point to where I was like, take a step back, see what I'm doing, come up with a plan. Um, because in, in the beginning you get in there and you buy the DVD, you listen to the webinar and everyone's telling you watch that, watch videos, watch videos, study. Are you studying late night tweets? Who's up studying, you know? And so you get into that mindset of yeah. doing what they, and, and I get it, you know, they're, they're, they're selling a program. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're doing what they have to do on their end. But at the same time, it wasn't until I said, okay, take a moment, figure out you were a teacher, you were a coach, figure out, is this the best way to get to where you want to be? And so when I figured out that I probably wouldn't do it that way, I started to make up a, like, pretty much a, a, um, a, um, a, a course syllabus of mm -hmm. what would I do yeah. to get here? And so, the, so I put together who, what, when, where, um, based upon this, this is what I need to do. And so, I, I, I mean, and, and there were a lot of traders that I knew I wouldn't agree with. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, they, I needed to hear their perspective because I needed to know what not to do. Totally. Um, totally. And what, because, and you never know who's, who's going to say something a certain way and then it clicks. That's it. And so it helps between you all defined. the... Helps you define. It helped you define your style, your temperament, your character. Like there's, there's a view you have on the world. And if you don't understand uh, what works for you, how are you going to be able to live with it to go the distance? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's, that's one of the biggest things is, is when I, when I, when I started to take 100% ownership of my trading, that's when I started to see a, a huge change in, in the way I started to, to see the market. Um, because before then I was just, you know, if it didn't work, I, I would say that, that, that doesn't work. You know, um, this guy's just trying to pump up a stock, you know, and I was blaming everyone else because I wasn't where I thought I needed to be. And so until I, I took ownership of where I was, then I started to make that, that change. And I saw a drastic change in, and um, and where I was now, it took me five years, but I probably could have started being um, a lot more profitable two years ago. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel like I had a total understanding of the market. Yeah. Um, because when I first started, I was all about longing, and I, I didn't I didn't know anything about shorting. And so um, when when I started to to figure out how to short, I, I opened up a trade zero account and I started trying shorting. Um, I blew up a couple of trades in shorting and I didn't feel good at all, yeah. at all. So I stopped. And so I went back to just longing, but longing, it it, it takes so- um, Long to get. Yes, it, it, it takes so long to get, but at the same time, the profits aren't as nearly as big as, as when you short. I, do um, I think you've got to understand the long game because like you, you, you must know Dan Irish, Bryce Tui, Matt Monaco. Those guys are pulling 30 K weeks, sometimes 30 K. Oh, yeah. Yes. With size, but do that. I think those guys are hitting 10%, seven to 10 to 12%. Yeah. No, no, every no. Yeah, day. I, I agree. Uh, the only thing I'm saying from, from wh where I was, a lot of times I would only have one bullet for the day. Yeah, I only yeah. had three, yeah. three trades for the, for the week. Yeah. And so, you know, when you only have one bullet, that's a huge difference. You know, if, you, if you, if you miss on your long trade yeah. and it goes against you, you got to get out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Cause it's and so, going down and it's not so coming it. back up. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, now that I'm over PDT, 
I'll be able to, to play the longs it, a different way than I did when I was under PDT. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just because of, you know, I, I don't, you, you don't have that, that restriction of, you know, you, you got to get out and you can't get back in because you don't have no more trades. Yeah. Um, Can I celebrate it? Have you celebrated crossing the PDT? Did you like? Yeah, as much as I could. You know, when, when it's such a lonely uh, hobby <laughs> exactly. or lonely career, yeah. you know, you can you, all you can do is be like yes and yes. look around and you know, <laughs> so back out and get yeah. that. You know, pat yourself on the back. And, uh, I'll, I'll, well, well, I'll have a beer with well, you in America. Well, I'll, have, exactly. I'll, have a, I'll have a beer with you when I'm there and say well done. But can I, can I just ask, like, what was the setups that you found the most success in? Shorts, because obviously you've got like first red day, your multi day parabolics, your gap and crafts. Like, what are you shorting? What worked? You shorted BBIG. So that was like a first green day in a big gap. So for me, like, you shorted like a multi day gap, but there's also like gap and crafts, first red days. Like, what was it that, um, what's the setup that you shorting that you found success in? Um, uh, honestly, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't work off of patterns. Now, the pattern, the pattern is part of the, the tendency that I use to give me conviction that this is going to be a short today. This stock is going to end up here, you know, um, because, you know, when I was coaching and we would look at plays, I would say, okay, if, if the left, if number 64 comes in the game, they're going to do this, you know, and if, and if, and if the, 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 the wide receiver uh, claps his hand twice, they're going to do this. And so based upon that, we would come up 80% of the time when number 64 is in the game, this is what they're going to do. Yeah. And so when I would identify what I thought was it, what I think is a gap in crap or a, or a, a dip buy or a red to green or a um, VWAP hold, um, that I use that as a tendency that I, I put together with, you know, the other indicators that I use to give me that percentage of, is this stock gonna go short by the end of the day? Or is it gonna be a long by the end of the day? And what I did was I took the first 8.30 to nine o'clock in the morning and, and, and I, I broke that down for, for trades. And um, I put it on a stopwatch. I would record and I would watch that 8.30 to 9 p.m. trade, a.m. trading and I would time it. I would time from where the, the big move happened. And I'd say, okay, base 90% of the time, I only have less than five minutes to get in and get out before they change directions. Yeah. So wow. it, 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 um, it, uh, morning trading, 8.30 to 9 is, is real fast. You know, yeah. is that central so, time or what's that Eastern time? Is that central time or Eastern time? Central it, time. Yeah. Yeah. So, because so you're, you're talking like 9 30 or 10 30 or something Eastern. Yeah. 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 yeah so, yeah. the first 30 minutes of the trading day, yeah. Uh, I, ha I, I, I have it on a watch. And if I enter a trade in the, in the first 30 minutes, I'm looking to get in and get out. I'm not holding. And, and that was the biggest thing in the past. I would wait to see what I was looking for before I tried to enter or exit a trade. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest mistakes is, is you try to see it because you don't, you don't have the confidence or the, the, the conviction to say, I'm going to go all, you know, I, I have to do it. Now it's more reactive. You know, yeah. now I, 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 I get in or get out based upon what's happening. I don't need to see it because I know it's going to happen. Yeah. But I mean, basically, wrong, Cut out of it, oh. get out of it. Yeah. But basically what I saw with BBIG is your say it's not pattern based. You're looking at a stock and saying like BBIG is shorted just before it broke down. Like you could spot like the, yeah. the longs are the long, the long, the long momentum is getting weaker. This is not sustainable. And you hit the perfect moment before it broke down. So you saw the mm -hmm. breakdown before it happened because you've studied so many hours of charts. You've seen them break down before, so you know how they break down, right? Yeah, and the level two. The level two is a big part of that. You know, yeah. seeing how, how, how it's moving. And um, a lot, you can get a lot from the level two based upon how 
the, the speed of the entries and yeah, dude, and absolutely. The size. absolutely. And so, but you have to trust, you know, and, and, and you know, there's some times when, when, when I, I don't trust it and I get out of it, you know, there were times on the poker table when I would fold pocket aces after the flop and I should have had the bigger hand, but I didn't trust that I did. And if somebody put me all in, I had to fold. Um, and so that's the mentality that I have with trading is, I, if, if I don't feel 100% comfortable, fold it, you know, but get out of it. Isn't it really fascinating that often the level two displays numbers, right? It displays information. Mm -hmm. It's got the bids and it's got the asks. But isn't it interesting that it's often not the information that it displays, but how, fa but how fast that information's displaying, how fast it's turning, mm -hmm. how fast it's moving. It's the pace of the information rather than the information. Exactly. That make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 No doubt. But it, it, you, you will never, you will never understand that until you've watched the level two yeah. Yeah. for hours and hours. Um, and that's, but that's what, that's what beginning traders don't understand is they want to, that, you know, and, and the market's very, very um, crafty. It'll let you think, you know what you're doing yeah. and then it'll, it'll humble you real fast. You know? I feel like, I feel like what you guys just talked about, like if people listen, you don't have to spend those hours. Like I heard that just now and I'm not really trading, but I remember paying attention to level two, Stephen. And what you just said, that sounds like a jewel that it isn't the numbers, but the speed in which they're changing. And that's why this is why I think it is so important to listen to our podcast because those little jewels are going to save you hours and hours of wasted time but yes then you have to leave our podcast and go watch it for yourself but that makes me think oh i'm going to look for sure on that from a different perspective because of what you just said and just oh, one yeah, and um and, and on that note when you the what you just said kim is you know listening um, and that's why it's so important to listen to what podcasts and videos, but um, you should have a pen and a pad and you should be writing down, you know, key points to everything you're listening and you're watching. And then the next video, if, if, if the next person is talking about the same thing in the other video and, and, and you'll start to see that th there's, there's, there's information out there that's consistent in everyone's uh, trading style, you might want to pay attention to that, you know? Yeah, um, for sure. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they just watch videos. They just, you know, same thing like when you were in college in the class, you know, you just sat there and listened to the professor, you know? And then yeah. the professor gave you a study guide and then you went and tried to study, you know? But yeah. if when you were in the class, if you were taking notes and you reviewed your notes, you didn't even need that study guide. But, but like so, the thing is though, Dude, there's, sure. there's an absolute reason why the challenge is one year. And there's a reason why like the steady trade team, it's a year, right? The reason oh, yeah. is because like, it'll take you a year to learn the basics, right? And dude, like what people don't realize is, yeah, you can watch videos and webinars and you'll get the basics, which is what that, that's the job, right? To give you the basics. But what I found is that you, you can only be taught so much. And then you walk down that long, dark road of total grind on your own. And that's how you get profitable. You, you grind the last part on your own. You can't be taught everything. And I think that's what you, you've said, and that's what I know. Um, and that's why a lot of people fail, because it's not spoon-fed. It's, yeah. it's, it's initiative. It's, it's qu being inquisitive. And, and it's oh, yeah. self-drive. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of, a lot of people, um, they, they think it's easier than it is. Dude, everyone does, um, yeah. You know, they 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 think that um, because I mean, I, I, quite honestly, you know, I'm 42 years old, but the majority of, of people making millions of dollars in the stock market that I know are in their 20s, you know, yeah, same. and in in their their yeah. early 30s. And I'm like, you know, it it can't be that hard if 20 year olds, you know, and but it is. It's very Dude. difficult. Pretty small 20 year olds though, eh? Like these guys are in the <laughs> yeah, 20s, exactly. pretty, pretty small guys. But at the guys. same time, at the same time, it's only a handful of them. 
Yeah, you know? it's not money. That's it's it's, it's not hundreds of 20 year olds. No, it's not. No, it's you know? not. It, it's there's really a handful point. of them that get it. And and I think that's the hardest thing for, for new traders to, to understand is you better pack a lunch and you yeah. better get ready to, <laughs> to go through some ups and downs and hit some dark sp- uh, places. And yeah. I mean, there were a lot of times when the question came up that I don't know if this is for me, but at the same time, I loved it because it was so challenging. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, there was nobody to pat you on the back. There was nobody to give you a pep talk. It was, you wanted to be however motivated you wanted to be. Yeah. You, you don't, you don't have to listen to the, to the steady trade podcast. You don't have to watch webinars. You don't have to, to, to sign up for everyone's uh, chat room. You don't have to do those things, but your fire is going to go out real quick. Um, and you know, and, 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 you know, I, I hated that you had to struggle, Stephen, but your struggles, no more than you, you brother, me. no you more know? than you. Um, and, and Kim, I, I know, I know you're new, um, what, this is probably your second year, uh, trading. Um, you know, I, I know you've got a but... lot of movies you have to watch Rocky three and Rocky right. and all those, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, it's all those, those hours of, of, of yeah. seeking out motivation yeah. that keeps that you in the game. Yeah, uh, for because sure. I, I promise you this, nobody has ever called me on the phone or, or sent me a tweet asking about how my trading is going. Nobody yeah. said, I just wanted yeah. to check on your trading. Uh, yeah. Keep it up. Hope you're okay. Yeah. yeah. No, no one's proud of you. <laughs> well, I'll say it to you now. I'm proud of you, Claude. So, I'm inspired by your determination. I'm inspired by your, you know, pragmatism. And it just feels like you set yourself up for success in so many ways. The way you approach this, you really approached it from such a mature, you know, perspective. It's really impressive. Really something, oh, well, Stephen. I appreciate Steven. that. I really yeah, appreciate it's that. the truth. Congrats. You should be can really I, proud of yourself. Can I please be the first one to tell you as well? Is that the, the hard part's over now? Like the worst is over, dude. Like if you made mm-hmm. it to this point, it shouldn't ever get worse than this because in the back of your head, if you ever do take big losses or small losses or losses or red months or small red months, you always know that A, you've given back money that you made in the market. So you didn't grind a really hard job to make it. And B, you can make it back no matter what. Like if you take a loss, you always know I can make it back. And, and it's not like you're a mug who's losing money that you should be spending on groceries and you're losing your job. Like you're not losing money that you made in your job. And you're like, when's this gambling addict going to quit? It's not like that anymore. If you lose now, you just give back some of what you made. And, and that yeah. makes it tremendously uh, much more easier, much more easy um, mm. in the future. So the hard part's over. Well done. You made it. You graduated. And dude, I know about 30 <laughs> traders who made it and I know about 3,000 who didn't. So mm-hmm. great That's job. Being well done. Of that so well done, yeah. Clutch. So, so awesome. now let me, let me ask you guys, uh, Stephen, from a trader's perspective and Kim from, yeah. you know, just the, the mind and the emotional and um, even you, you're a trader. So um, w- w- what advice do you give? Mm-hmm. Um, because, I mean, quite honestly, once I, I, I got over PDT, um, it was almost like I was new to trading again mm-hmm. um, in yeah. the mindset. And so I'm having to figure out Okay, now you have free reign of, of trading. How are you going to attack it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, my advice uh, would be um, to try and not change too much all at once because what you have now is a, a real big winning formula. Like back to back 10K months, uh, you have, you've defined a pretty solid edge there. I mean, I mean, as long as you're not having too many drawdowns that are too significant, but if you haven't 10 to get back to back 10 K months and you've grown a small account, it sounds like you've really got a good edge in what you're doing. So I, I wouldn't change much. And if you do change it, I'd change it very slowly. Um, and, and just, um, and just watch your size. That's all because you just don't want a bad loss. That's going to a knock your confidence. And, um, and B, put you back under PDT because it'll be demoralizing. Like just 
for me, I would like size down and grind that five, six, seven K cushion. So you can take a three K loss, worst case, and you're still over PDT, right? You just don't want to go backwards now. Yeah. 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 And I think my advice would be to get more support because I think it is really hard to do this in that kind of uh, silo. So I, I would say, you know, create a relationship or two where you can have that sense of fellowship at the level that you now are at. And perhaps somebody who's a little bit ahead uh, on that journey so that they can kind of encourage you and pull you forward Stephen Johnson yeah, but is, I'll be having them taking big losses and max losses and stuff I'll be like just hold it it'll be okay <laughs> well the oh, key yeah. here is like you need to have somebody who calls you forth for you to own and step into that next level like you've gone through that glass ceiling so now you have to find out where is your discomfort with the next goal that you set for yourself and how do you make sure you manage your risk, but also get the encouragement and that sense of, you know, next you're you're up leveling. And I think when you're up leveling, you do need support and you do need encouragement and you do need to celebrate the wins. You really do. Oh, yeah. It's easy to focus on what you could do better, but you have to stop and pause and really acknowledge the success you've had not to get cocky, but to be encouraged and kind of nourished to go to the next level. Yeah, I, we, we, I kind of celebrated it. Uh, the other night, I, t- I took the wife out to Olive Garden for the Never Ending Possible. So, uh, so that, was, that was quite a celebration. Uh, <laughs> too, too much, uh, too much. much. Just you're, one you're allowed to go to a fancy restaurant now, Clutch. I do. I, I still haven't even been to a fancy restaurant. I'm like, I'm too scared. You get too scared to spend the money because you don't know. You get scared to like have this separation with money. It's weird. But um, oh yeah, you do. And and that was the whole deal. Like um, I, when I I was open the computer today, and I said, you know, if I if you want to stay over PDT. I pretty, I'm only over it by like 500 bucks. So I said, I'm pretty much back to where I started in the beginning, trading with a $500 yeah. account. Yeah. And so, um, you know, um, but you can't have that, that mindset, you know, like you said, Stephen, you just have to, to do what's gotten me here and, yeah. you know, trust that, that it's going to get me, uh, get me a cushion. So that way I can continue to trade like, like, like I want to, and I know how, um, but yeah, no, you guys, uh, big shout out to you guys on, on the podcast. Um, you know, I, I, I listen to you guys regularly. Um, and, um, you know, it, you guys have been a, a, a big part of the success. Um, no one does anything alone. Um, and so, you know, all you guys, I mean, and, and, and I'm the kind of guy that I'll bug anyone for information. <laughs> You know, so I'll shoot emails, I'll shoot tweets, I'll shoot, really? I'll tag somebody in a tweet. That's um, so smart, Clutch, so smart. And, and so, That's you good. know, um, the, the worst thing that can happen is they don't respond or, or they, they tell That's me right. no. That's you know? right. And so, so I've bugged so many people along this journey and, you know, um, and I, I'm very appreciative of, of everyone's, you know, uh, help, even though you, like you guys, this is the first time I've ever met you guys. But you guys had no idea that you were such an inspirational part of my journey. Um, oh. So keep doing what you're doing because um, there are those people out there that, you know, um, that's, not- that's all they got, you know, that's all they have. And, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I'm very motivated. You know, I know Tim Bowen, he believes that motivation is, um, you know, uh, 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 um, from within, you know, like yeah. you're not born with yeah. it and, but, um, you know, I, I think, um, I think that I'm very fortunate that I've seen a lot of things that have allowed me to become motivated, yeah. you know, and I'm yeah. smart enough to know, you know, I don't necessarily have to go down that path. I can just learn from somebody else's path and say, you know, I don't want to go down that road. That's you know? right. And so, That's like right. I said, Steve, you know, I hate that you had to struggle. Mm-hmm. But a lot of your struggles help help me avoid certain struggles that I'm sure uh, I would have had. And so, no, you know, I appreciate it. It's good to pass so, it on. But dude, just remember, you're, you're still in the early stages as well. I hope you have another five-figure month. I hope you have a double it and have a 20K a month. 
but just don't get too disheartened if if you make mm. two thousand or three thousand or do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the market runs in cycles, traders run on hot streaks. Like, I, I wish it, I, I hope you're on the hottest streak. I, I hope you've just cracked the market and, and you and it's all <laughs> and it's all forward. But but also I just wanted to say don't be disheartened if like you don't go up, 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 because traders were which were, were like profit charts where we'll go up and then we'll pull back and then we'll go up and then mm-hmm. we'll pull back. Um and there's there's a, it's, it's all the more learning to the years to come as well. Oh yeah. That's, that's another thing that I've, I've done is on um, profitly. Like, I mean, I, I, I scope out everyone's profit chart and I, just to compare, you know, how is my profit chart moving compared to other people's? Yep. And so, you know, yep. I'll pull up, you know, yours, I'll pull up, you know, other, you know, guys that I look that's up fine. to and, and I'll see that they had a dip in this, you know, during this, after this run of success. And so, you know, I'm preparing yeah. for those. Um, I don't, I don't ever want to be surprised. And so I'm preparing right now for when that does happen. Mm-hmm. What is my game plan on how I'm going to um, attack that? Um, because, Beautiful. you know, I mean, I, already in my mind, I'm like, okay, if, if, if I drop down below PDT, what's my game plan to get back over it, you know? Um, and so, um, you know, smart. very smart. Yeah, no, love I mean, it. That's great advice. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Thanks, Stephen. This was such a great guest to bring on. I'm so happy you invited Clutch. It's really, really eye opening. Clutch to meet you. Really great. Oh, and and it's it's an honor to meet you guys uh, as well. I guess that's a wrap. I, I think it's been a really informative uh, and inspiring Clutch, inspiring mm-hmm. chat on on what it takes to, to, to trade your way over the PDT and, and Clutch is mm-hmm. uh, the man who's done it. So congratulations. And, and, and if anyone's watching on uh, YouTube or on across any social channels, leave comments below, give Clutch a, a pat on the back and a well done. That's because right. That's I think um, he deserves 20, 30 or 40 or 50 comments or a thumbs up just to, to give him the well done that he deserves. So thank absolutely. You. And, and what's your, what's your handle Clutch on Twitter? Uh, clutch at clutch caller. Okay, got it. Perfect. Um, perfect. Uh, yeah, it's just awesome. clutch caller, and that's it. Uh, clutch right. trades. Uh, I I try to be clutch in everything I do. Good. You know, whether that's paying the Slut. house bill or. You know, <laughs> exactly. So my my saying is, do trust believe. You know, so mm-hmm. do your best. Trust that the setups will work, and believe that it will all work out. So. Um, awesome. That's that's, that's my that's my motto. <laughs> A good motto. Nice to meet you, Clutch. Oh, same here. Nice to uh, meet you, dude. We'll Thanks for coming. See each on. other again. Yeah, dude. For I'll sure. hit you on Twitter after this as well. We'll chat. All right, cool. Appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, guys. See you later. Yeah. Bye bye. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks so much for watching and being part of the Stocks Trade community. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Our goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, but we can't do it without you guys. So if you like what we're doing here and you want to hear more, please, please, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next video.